All right, guys, Devstream 175 just ended, and boy, did that hold a lot of info for what's in store next month in Warframe. So let's just jump straight into the topics in no particular order, but as always, timestamps are added beneath the video. Kicking things off with Corvex, the newest cement radiation themed Warframe coming within the Whispers of War update this December. Corvex is the 55th Warframe in line and the first one to be released under the letter Q. So here's a quick rundown of his abilities. Passive. Corvex imbues and infuses radiation into any of his equipped weaponry. It's a pretty simple passive, but definitely not the worst that we've had, so I definitely welcome it. His first ability is Chirinka Pillar. Now, this is also the ability that will be available to subsume. Corvex can summon up to two radiation-themed pillars. They will pulse out radiation damage and radiation proc to enemies within their aura-like zones. The pulses on these pillars, when reacted by another of his abilities, will actually pulse out faster radiation procs. So there is synergy and a key part of his kit. His second ability is called Containment Wall. Corvex clamps forward two walls that close and group enemies together by smashing their little faces into each other. Now, I'm not going to lie, the visual aspect of this ability looks so damn clean. So shout out to whoever designed this ability in particular. But this will be great for pairing towards that extra crowd control on top of those radiation procs in the first place. Crowd control heaven. Corvax's third ability is Disometric Guard. So casting this, he will provide his entire team with a status immunity, but it's more selective, mostly to things like magnetic procs and knockdowns as an example. Now this is based on stacks per se, so the more radiation he bumps out, the better his protection value that he gives you. And finally, Corvax's fourth ability is Crucible Blast. Corvax shoots out a beam in which connects and chains to nearby enemies. So when you stop casting the ability, you will see that there'll be a remaining dot enabled on your foes. And this looks like it causes stagger. So that adds an extra step to all of this crowd control that he brings. So overall, subbing him up, he looks pretty good for anyone who enjoys zone-related Warframes. Players who cater to defense-like missions or holding your ground in survivals, for example, he comes with that plenty amount of CC, which also helps his survivability. If that's you, this is your man. Now, I'm super excited to go and get my hands on this one. I mean, maybe two hands. <laughs> Coming with Corvex is a brand new art gun named the Mandanel. I might have pronounced that wrong, in which brings two different ways to damage with it. So there will be a charged up beam shot. And in this clip, there's supposed to be a lingering radiation zone, but it's just not really ready to be shown off just yet. And then there will be a buckshot spread shot in which shows better promise for higher fire rate to help with your ad clearing. So with this new introduction of art gun, all of the heavy art gun land weapons will also be getting overguards when summoned. Now this is going to help to protect you during those big animations animation locks when summoned, which is a great quality of life to add to them. Furthermore, a lot of the art guns will be seeing some buffs here and there to things like damage or even quality of life like punch through. So expect to see a lot of changes towards these art guns upon release. He also showed off a few small teasers to what we can expect within the Whispers of the Wall quest line. But one more important part was these vessels that we can see here and the fact that there is multiple of them. Are they interactable? Will we be syncing up like Power Ranger squad and summon a Megatron in the middle of our runs, who knows? But let me know what your thoughts are on what you think that we can do with these vessels. So we saw at Tedacon the brand new Grimoire Warframe is getting, and now we have some more information on it. So this will be a secondary weapon called Tomes, and they will be moddable with auras and strike related mod sets, only customizable to the Tomes themselves. Now I do notice that they have said Tomes, which is plural, and whether Pablo denies it or not, he did blot out a future Echoes update. So it's taken a pattern from what we're seeing with the likes of Daviri or Angel of Zaman updates, where there's possibly another update in January or maybe February, in which it could go ahead and add more content to the Whispers in the Wall content area. So I've got it in two minds that we could be seeing more of these tomes in the future. And I'm super interested and invested in them because the recent Incarnate weapons we've received have been very well received by the community. So only time will tell, but I'm keeping an eye on this one. Now, post Whispers in the Wall quest completion, we'll be seeing quite a few few new game modes added. Well, to Rebecca's words, we'll have about three and a half as one of them is a spin of something we already have anyways. So the first one is called Alchemy. This will be an endless like mission in which killing enemies will drop these fusion like elemental grenades, if you will, and we can either use them to throw and kill enemies or we can feed them into this big brewing pot called the Crucible we see here in which we can combine basic elements such as 
heat, electric, toxin or coals and see what new combinations or fusions happens from either within or without. So they are being a little bit vague on what's going to happen during this mission so it's to speculate for now but this one has definitely grasped my interest straight away so I hope that it's fun. The second game mode is called Netracells and this is a newer more updated take on something that we've already done within the Oricon vaults. Dragon keys for corrupted mods so if you're familiar with those terms and you've heard those words before you'll have a better understanding of going into this new mission. As we enter the mission there will be four different debuff elements in which do different things whenever a player selects them. The conductive element procs an AoE thunder strike around the player so keep moving to avoid that damage. Sanguine means that every time that you can take damage you will suffer bleed procs. Frame curse curses the user with damage whenever you cast an ability and finally a vampiri I hope I said that correctly causes the user to lose health every second but killing enemies restores that health. So whether you play the solo or in a group you will need all four of these equipped before you can begin and enter the mission. As for what we do in a mission well we can only see that there's an objective pop up on the left hand side which is optional to pinpoint where the location is that we have to go. So this could be like the vault doors that we had to find in the Deimos Oricon vaults for the corrupted mods but as for what we do from there well it's not really been mentioned but this game mode to me is going to be more interesting to see which frames can solo and handle this the best. I mean Warframes like Revenant with his Mesma skin could probably tank and survive any of these debuffs or do they go against the grain and have they taken this in mind to bypass things like Mesma skin? Either way I'm curious going to see which the meta is. So the third new mission is an assassination mission to do with the new Murmur faction within the labs. This mission is trying a different approach as you won't be able to just join, head straight over to the boss, kill it and then leave. Instead in order to find the fragmental mind boss we have to find an eye or collect an eye who knows it's probably a locator or a way to summon the boss again this is just de being very vague here so i'm trying to just give you the information that i know however that they did mention there will be three variants of this boss so that should help spice things up if we're just looking to farm it i'm not sure if they will be mechanically different but one can hope and this mission will also be tied heavily to the new clan event coming called Gargoyle's Cry, I believe, in which we will be obtaining a gargoyle to place with it in our dojo to quote unquote bring them alive. I have literally no idea what this means, but I'm open to your ideas. What the hell do you think happens when we place a gargoyle alive inside our dojos? So to note, the clan event itself won't actually be coming with leaderboards, at least at launch. This is a bit of a mix up. I'm not too sure what's going on here, but this is mostly due to bugs or exploits, which always happens whenever a leaderboard is provided. The people at the top are so saturatedly high because they found a ribbon that does negative crit damage that does 2.1 billion and damage for example so they decided to keep this away from the game this time round in the meantime and upon completing the community goal in the clan event players will be rewarded with a brand new signia for their activity within the event and i can't lie to you this looks pretty clean so i'll definitely be chasing after this one myself so then we have that final mission the 0.5 uh, playoff spin-off the mirror defense mission which we got in citrine's last wish update but possibly a play between the necromech faction and then the murmur faction maybe bouncing between the two i don't know i'm speculating there but it's gonna be a play of the mirror defense mission at least now there will be a brand new syndicate within the atrati labs called the caviar 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 i don't know fish who knows well we'll be progressing and unlocking our rewards over time with them and i'm pretty sure that this is just standard and obvious to all of us but they are hiding who the npc is we're not entirely sure who we're going to trade with just yet if i had to guess it would be lloyd's i don't know what's your guess right now boys this is an interesting one melee is getting a big update and honestly perhaps it might be the last that we'll be seeing for quite some time introducing the use of tenokai so i'm going to put this as simple to understand there will be a new set of mods in which if we equip to our melee Melee builds will provide us with a new technique to our melee combat gameplay. Whenever we attack, there is a chance to proc an opportunity for Tenokai, which gives us a really fast, 100% efficiency, heavy attack attack. So basically, whenever we attack now, a heavy attack would consume all of our combo points and build up. Well, this new method of melee will not consume our points if you react to the Tenokai opportunity proc prompted on your screen. Now, I will say that I personally quite like this. You see, I find melee a bit boring and unengaging. Mash the button, kill the enemy, lovely jubbly. However, with this technique, it brings a more interactive reward to you dishing out damage and being rewarded for paying attention with activity. Also, on top of this, melees will be getting around 9 or 10 new arcanes added within their build. 
builds. Now, this one I am not too sure about, but I will judge this further when the Arkings are released and I can see their values. What do you guys already think about this? Archon shards are getting expanded upon, and yes, oh yes, this will be the highlight of the dev stream for me. Archon shards have single-handedly changed some of my builds drastically and allowed for more room to breathe in other areas that I would have not been able to mod for in the past. With this update, we'll be seeing a coalescent feature to fuse Archons into new Archons, giving us new features like procs. This is definitely the one that I'm going to be keeping my eye on the most when the update releases, but more ways to obtain Archon shards and different varieties of them, I welcome with opening arms. And speaking of welcoming things with opening arms, Arcanes are getting a huge update, allowing for Arcane Desolation. So when the update drops, a particular NPC will give us the option to dissolve Arcanes that we are no longer wanting or needing to get a currency named Phosphor. Then, with that currency, we could then buy what seems to be how we purchase packs of relics. So this is more of a tiered system. It won't be all of the Arcanes in one area. Instead, it might be a Warframe Arcane pack or an Eidolon Arcane pack, for example. Either way, it's selective to choose which to spend your currency on, but from there, it's random which Arcane you get inside of your pack. You understand? So things like Arcane Energize are going to be obtainable, but they're going to be incredibly rare. Either way, it's another way to go and get Arcanes outside of the content that they're tied to, so I welcome this change. Gauss Prime has just been announced as our next Prime Warframe to pick up. Now, this won't be until January, and that speculates that he could be releasing with the new Echoes update with in mind as well. With Gauss comes his signature as Seltra Prime and Acarius Prime secondaries, as well as a brand new Gauss Prime trailer to get hyped over. But also, I believe he comes with what I think is the very first Warframe floof to be added in the game. Happy days for Gals players. And Cross Save is officially releasing with whispers in the walls and it'll be rolling out in phases. I mean, just the mention of it releasing was enough to crash the Warframe website today. So if it fully dropped, the servers would get overloaded and none of us could play. So starting things off, it'll be Warframe founder players who will receive the Cross Save first and rightly so. They will get to experiment the changes and let us see how this has rolled out. Upon the Cross Save release, you will get two options. So the first option is linked accounts in which if you own multiple accounts you'll basically choose the daddy of all of those accounts to be the main account and from there onwards it will lead officially to sync up with all your playable platforms to play with this is your main account the second option is a one-time merge option in which you'll be able to choose which account you want to focus on so again the daddy account and then all of your other accounts will merge into that selection and from there that is now your sole account so there's more details details on this when it comes closer to release. My advice is to keep your eyes on the official Warframe website and use it for guidance. If you're unsure what to do, what can be infused, and if you need more information to help you with your decision. So guys, that's basically about the highlights for me and the ones that I think are influential to what you can play or do when the update comes. Now on screen are a few more notes of a few more things that they did mention, but this video is already long enough in my opinion, so I'm going to leave them here for you to go and glance at. Devstream 175 was absolutely packed with great news, and in a year where I thought only the, the very Paradox update would be the big update, we also got that update and this, and even more, we just had a quality of life update, a massive overhaul with the Degaf update. So with the new leadership changes over at Warframe, it looks like they're coming out to impress, and so far, they have come out swinging. I do hope that this momentum can continue, because we as players are reaping all the rewards right now, and this is making me happy. So I think Thank you guys for watching today's video and if you did enjoy it leave a cheeky like to support the channel and share the video with a friend if they need a recap of what's to come next month if you're new to the channel then subscribe and stick around but as always i'll be catching you guys again in the next video